In this lesson, we are going to be looking at rational exponent equations. So some students get confused with what a rational exponent equation is. So for example, it's like this. It's got, um, for example, x to the power of 2 over 3 minus 6 equals to 7, for example. So what we can see is that the variable has a rational Rational is like, uh, you can think of it in this context, you can think of it as, as a fraction, okay? So the variable has a fraction exponent, and that's what we're going to look at. And um, some students con confuse it with these types of equations. But what these equations are, where they have like a root, those are called radicals. These are called radical equations, whereas we're looking at rational exponents, okay? Now, there are some rules that your teachers may be gone over, but they probably made it quite complicated and it leaves you feeling pretty overwhelmed with how you're gonna remember it. But I have a way that will make it really simple. So what I want you to remember is the following. I want you to look at the variable, okay? I'm gonna write out a few for us. Um, let's do something like that and um, that and let's do um, that. Okay, so let's, so what I want you to do is the following. I always want you to look at these rational parts, okay? And if there is an even number, so here's rule number one. If, um, so either the top or the bottom. So let's, for example, say this. Let's do, let's say the general form is A over B. So if A or B is even, you know, the even numbers, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, like that, then the other side of the equal sign, I'll show you what I mean now, then the other side of the equal sign cannot be negative. Don't worry, I'm gonna clear this all up for you now. So for example, um, if you have like this, equals to seven, equals to minus three, equals to two, and equals to minus four. So it says that if A or B is even, so let's see, A is even, okay? So what it says is that the, the, the number or the other side of the equal sign cannot be negative. So is this one okay? Yes, that's okay, it's not negative. Let's have a look here. So if you look at A or B, so there's A, there's B, can you see that A is an even number? You know, two, four, six, eight, ten, 10, and it goes on. So because that's even, then this side here is not allowed to be a negative. So this one would actually have a no solution. Okay, and then look at this one. Here we don't have to worry uh, because there it's a, let me actually add another one. Um, three over five equals to negative six. So here you can see that there's no even numbers. So it doesn't matter what this is. So this one's okay. Uh, if you look at this one, can you see that this bottom number is an even number? So you cannot have a negative over here. So that is a no solution. Here we have a negative but it doesn't matter because these two numbers are not even. The rule says if A or B is even, then the other side cannot be equal, um, cannot be a negative. But if this side has odd numbers, then it doesn't matter if that's negative, okay? So these two are eliminated automatically. Rule number two, if A or B, sorry, if A is even, if A is an even number, okay? You always have to check rule number one first. If rule number one is uh, satisfied, then you move on to rule number two. Okay, so if A is an even number, then the answer will have a positive and a negative. So therefore, there will be two answers. Okay, let me show you what I mean. Okay, so if we look at this one, um, we first have to start with rule number one. So rule number one says that if A or B is even, so here's an even number, then the answer on the other side cannot be negative. Okay, that's fine, we good there. This number's not a negative, so we pass rule number one. Now we have to go to rule number two. Rule number two says that if A is even, yes it is, look, A is the top number, okay? So A is an even number, then the answer will have a plus and a minus. So when you solve this, I'm gonna show you how to solve this a little bit later, When you in this video, when you give your answer, you're gonna say, plus plus and minus when you give the answer, okay? If we move on to this one, this one is automatically no solution because of rule number one. We spoke about that a few seconds ago. If we go to this one over here, none of the numbers are even over there. So this one you're just gonna solve normally. Now, if we go to this one, this one is automatically excluded because of rule number one. And then this one we said is okay. But now if I add something like, um, 
let's say 3 over 2 equals to 8. If we look at rule number 1, this one is okay, because it says that even though we have an even number, as long as this isn't a negative, then you can go to rule number 2. It says that if A is even, is A even? No, it's not. So we don't have to worry about rule number 2 for that one. Okay, now we get, now those are the two rules. You don't, you do not need to know anything else. So if those two rules make sense, now we're going to go to, um, actually, I'm going to show you how to actually solve. Here's our first example, and I've added a couple of things. So that's the general um, x to the a over b. That's what makes it a rational equation. Um, don't worry too much about what this looks like. I'll help you with that now. So rule one, remember that, and then rule number two. But now before we can even use these rules, we need to first rearrange everything so that, for example, this number needs to go over to the other side. Okay, so we're going to take that over to the other side and it's going to become 9 take away 1. Okay, and so that's going to be 8. All right, now don't worry about this 24. You cannot do anything with that 24 because it is locked inside here because of this number. So we need to get rid of that number first. But now we can actually start applying our rules. So you can apply your rule as soon as you've got this part and then it's got a little fraction number. So we've taken everything away and we've rearranged it so we've got something on the other side. So rule one says that if A or B is even, so A and B are those numbers, so we've definitely got an even number over there. So it tells us if A or B or e is even, the other side, which is this one, cannot be negative. Okay, we're not negative, so we're good. We've got a positive number there. Rule two says only use it if rule one is satisfied. Rule one, we are okay, so we can move on to rule two. It says that if A is even, now they're not talking about that A, we're talking about that A, remember, from this. So that A is not even, so we don't need to worry about rule number two at all. Okay, so Kevin, how do we actually get this away? So what you do, is you're just going to put a bracket like that and you're going to do the same on the side because in maths if you do something to the one side you can do it if you can do it as long as you do the same thing to the other side what i want you to then do is take this number and then flip it around we call that the reciprocal okay and then you're just going to do the same on this side there we go now if we're to use exponent rules for example if i gave you this then can you remember what to do with those numbers? Do you plus them or do you multiply them? Well, well done if you remember that you multiply them, okay? So we are gonna multiply these two, but what you would find is that if you multiply these two together, you actually end up with one. So what we've actually done is we've just removed that. That's the point. So on the left-hand side, we left with 8 to the 2 over 3. And on the right-hand side, we just left with a over 24. We don't have any fractions anymore because it's to the power of 1. And that doesn't really do anything. Now, here's where things could be different depending on how your teacher would like you to do this. Okay, So I'm going to show you the two different options. So option 1 and then option two. Now you just stick to what your teacher does, okay? I've seen different teachers use different techniques at this step. Some teachers are very old school and they just like nod into the whole calculator thing. So let's show that as option one. So this is the no calculator. Okay, so what they do is they take this number eight and they break it down into its prime factors. You know, like eight is the same as two to the power of three. Right? Okay, so that those teachers would prefer that. And then what they would want you to do is exponent rules over here where you multiply, and that's gonna give you, um, it's gonna give you two. And so you're gonna be left with two to the power of two. Okay, and that's gonna give you a four. Ooh, I'm running out of space. Okay, now to get the A by itself, you would take this 24 and you would multiply it up to the top over there. And so you'd end up with A as 96. Now we're not gonna say plus or minus because rule number two is not necessary for this question. Now option number two is for the more relaxed teachers who aren't so worried about not using a calculator. So you would go ahead and you would type this on your calculator and it would instantly give you four no needing to use any exponent rules. And then if you had to do the same thing over here, you would get 96. 
Now for the remainder of this video, we're just gonna be doing a whole bunch of examples. Here's our next example. So step one, you just wanna uh, sort of get this part by itself. So I'm gonna take this four over to the other side. You would end up minusing, so I'm just gonna in one step say that the, the other side is gonna become a 32. Okay, because 36 minus 4. Now we need to look at our rules. So this is the A and B that you look at. You don't do anything with that. You cannot do anything with that until you get rid of this. Okay, so it says that if A or B is even, oh, we've got an even number at the bottom there, then the other side cannot be negative. Okay, it's not negative, so we are okay. So we can move on to step two. It says that only use rule one if, um, only use this if rule one is satisfied. It says that if A is an even number, now A is not an even number, so we don't need to worry about rule two, okay? So now what we do is we get rid of this five over four. And can you remember how to do that? Well, well done if you remember that you just put a bracket on both sides and you just use the reciprocal. So four over five, it's like the upside down version, okay? And so now what we do is we use exponent rules over here and that would completely cancel out that part because five over four multiplied by four over five is one. And you might be saying, well, shouldn't we say two X to the power of one? But that's just the same as saying two X. And that's the point. We're trying to get rid of those exponents. So we're gonna say two X. Now I'm gonna use the more complicated method. Um, the one where your teacher is a bit crazy and doesn't want you to use calculators. So we know that the number 32 is the same as two to the power of five, okay? As I said, if your teacher's fine with using a calculator, then you would just go type that all on your calculator. And so what happens here is you use exponent rules and you actually end up with two to the power of four. So you would say two X is equal to 16. Now to get x by itself, you're just gonna divide both sides by two, and so x would be eight. We're not gonna say plus or minus eight. That would only happen if we had rule number two. Here's our next example. So you wanna get this part by itself. So I'm gonna take this 10 over to the other side, and so that's gonna give us 32. And then this side, we just have four over three. Now be careful, be very careful. Um, they're not saying that it's the two x in brackets. So this four over three, this catches so many students, that four over three is only for the X. If they wanted the two to be included, they would do that, like they did in our previous example over here. You see, this was our previous example and they had it like that. But because there's no brackets, it's only the X that has the four over three. So what this means is we can take this two to the other side by dividing both sides by two. So we're gonna end up with X to the four over three equals to 16. And maybe some of you tried this example by pausing the video and you would have possibly gotten it wrong by pretending that these were all together. But that's okay, that's not a bad mistake. Like students do that all the time. It's a small little thing. Um, so just be aware of that, okay? So now we can apply our rules. You can only apply the rules once you are at this step where you've got this part by itself um, and you've got everything else on the other side. Okay, so it says if A or B is even, so here we've got an even number, so then the, neg the other side cannot be negative. Okay, so it's not negative, so that's okay. Now at this step, this is when you want to use the rule. So, or well, the rules. So rule one says that if A or B is even, okay, so here we've got an even number, then the other side cannot be negative. Okay, so we're good. So we can move on to rule number two. Rule number two says that if A is even, now remember A is the top number, look at that, it is even. Okay, so when we give our answer, we're gonna say plus and minus. So that'll only come later, but just remember that rule two cannot be ignored. So here's what, in this, this is the step where we will put a bracket on both sides and we will use the opposite. So three over four and three over four. And so what happens is that if you multiply those two, it just cancels out. And so you end up with X on the right hand side. And then here I'm gonna use the more complicated method for, the, for those of you who have teachers that don't want you to use a calculator. If your teacher does let you use a calculator, then just go use the calculator in that step. So we're gonna end up with, um, if you have to multiply these two together, you're just gonna end up with two to the power of three. And now that's eight. But now, because of rule two, it says that use a plus and a minus in the final answer. So there's gonna be two answers, plus and minus eight. So the first answer is eight, and the second answer 
is negative eight. Hope that makes sense. That's what rule two means. Here's our next example. So when you see this funky bracket of like x minus five, don't worry about that. Your first step is just to try get this part by itself, and then you need to use your rules, okay? So I'm gonna take this two over to the other side. So we end up with 11 minus two, which is nine. And then here we have this. Okay, so now we can, now we're good to go. You cannot do anything with this part until this has been taken away. So do not take this minus five to the other side. It's locked inside there. Okay, now we can use the rules. So the rule says that if A or B is even, okay, so we've got an even number over there, then the other side cannot be negative. So that's okay, we don't have a negative. Then, um, only you, okay, so we'll, we'll only, okay, let's see if rule two is allowed. So it says if A is even, ah, A is even. Okay, so rule two, we need to keep that in mind, but that only comes in at the end. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we are gonna put a bracket around both sides and we're just gonna use the opposite, three over two, three over two. Now, once again, I'm using the technique for those who have a teacher that doesn't want you to use a calculator. So you would change the number nine to three to the power of two, and on this side, you just have x minus five, because remember, that part cancels out. Now, if you had to multiply these two together, that's just gonna give you three. So three to the power of three is what you would have over there. Now, three to the power of three is 27. Now, when you take, to get x alone, you're just gonna take this negative five to the other side. It's gonna become a positive, so it's gonna be 32. But because rule number two is still valid, then we're gonna say plus and minus. So x would be 32 or x would be negative 32. Here's our last example for this lesson. So if, take the six over to the other side, where you'd end up with four take away six, which is negative two. Okay, now we can use the rules. Rule one, if A or B is even, so there we have an even number, the other side cannot be negative. Oh, but it is. So what this one is, is a no solution. No solution.